Hello again everyone, this is Randy, your sewing machine man, and what we have today is a great little machine, the Janome 1600P DBX. 1600P DBX uh, is as close to as a full-size industrial machine that you'll get and still have it as a portable. And it weighs a bunch. It's probably one of the heaviest machines with a handle on it. It's got a plastic handle, so you got to be careful in the cold weather. If you grab the handle and torque it, it'll snap. So very heavy but it's very much like an industrial machine in that it has an industrial hook industrial bobbin case industrial bobbin just like you'll find in a singer 24112 or a juki 88 you know juki 800 555 it's that set up and it's pretty tried and true side load and this also has the dbx1 i'm suspicious that's where the dbx came from because it takes the dbx it has the round shank on top it's an industrial needle doesn't have the flat side, but the long groove goes to the left and it threads left to right, outside in. And it can say, uh, see, DBX1. It can say, well, it has on here, it says uh, 16X231, 16X257, and DBX257, depending on which manufacturer you get it from. There it is. But it's uh, sometimes you'll see it in a serger, uh, household sergers, baby lock, stuff like that. But it's a nice, nice little machine because, uh, you know, the, everybody says they're all metal, but that just they're just saying it's real heavy. And it is heavy. It's not all metal. It has a uh, rubber timing belt on the inside that coordinates the top and the bottom, keeps them in sync. And the timing belt's just like the heavy rubber timing belt you'll have in your car. Very, very similar. Uh, what this has uh, that I like is it has an adjustable pressure on top with a lot of pressure. And you can see in here, regulate it so you're not doing it blindly. You can say, I like to do certain stuff at two, certain stuff at four, zero. You lift it up and then you don't have any pressure. And you have your calibrations for your tension. So you can keep with that, see where that's going. A real nice threading diagram up here. And reminder to use a DBX1 needle. It's got a reminder on top on how to wind the bobbin. And getting the bobbin wound properly is critical. It's got a accessory or an auxiliary rather auxiliary bobbin winder on the side that you engage you press the button and it winds separate from the machine so you can wind a bobbin while you're sewing and that's why you have two spool pins on the back the extra spool pin is for the other spool and you got to be real careful when you're winding that bobbin when you get done if that little piece of thread is hanging down back there from where you've wound it and it's hanging down it's hanging down on the right hand side about that long the fan of the motor will suck it in, that little hole on the side that's ventilated, it'll suck it in, and it'll wrap around the motor, and the machine will lock up. And that's why this one came in. It was locked up, and these don't have many problems. But that will happen to any machine. I imagine I deal with uh, probably a couple machines a month that have thread wrapped around either the hand wheel or the motor pulley. And as it wraps around the motor pulley, the motor pulley gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the machine locks up because it won't turn anymore. And if you're bright like this lady that brought it to me and you stop and you don't burn your motor up, that's a good thing. So she stopped, called me, I took care of it. But you have to watch out for thread getting wrapped around the motor pulley. And that's how much thread was wrapped around it. It doesn't take long. And... A machine that's high speed, and that's one of the things they tout about this, it's a high speed one. And trust me, it is high speed. When they say it's high speed, they're not playing around. That is high speed. Yeah, it's like an industrial. So there's folks that want to get after it. They put the knee lift in there. They got their knee lifting in. They got the needle up, needle down, so they can stop on a corner, pivot, and... I've seen some ladies operate these. They're just like the ladies in the factory. They're really, really good. So I recommend this machine. It's, uh, I think I see them online. It's Sewing Parts Plus. I see them, uh, what, just a little less than a thousand, a little more than a thousand around that price point. But the main thing is they're good machines and they have good, strong motors. And uh, it's, it's a machine I would recommend. And just as an aside, for you look, for folks that have Janomes and all the ones that have the little power cords that are separate on the side, Always be careful. I had a lady last month that wasn't careful with her plugins, and all these plugins aren't exactly the same. The distance between these two prongs is sometimes off just a little bit, 
And you'll think, well, I'm taking these two machines in for service, or I'm going to the quilt retreat with these two machines, and I'll just take one of these along and they'll interchange. A lot of times they will. And the time it doesn't is when you go to plug this in and it snaps off one of those two prongs because it's just a little bit smaller. And you find out that whole apparatus in there costs about 180 bucks. You're like, okay, keep the power cord with the machine that it came with. So you don't have to worry about breaking off your little prongs for your power cord. So just a cautionary tale for that. Cautionary tale for the thread hanging down. Don't ever leave any threads dangling around any sewing machine or any machinery in operation because it'll grab it and it'll wind it up and make a mess no matter what machine that is. So that's just the left to right back and forth on this little guy. It's got sealed bearings. It doesn't require a lot of oil on the top main bearings, bottom main bearings. But inside here where it uh, has to be oiled, where you have to uh, oil your take ups and stuff, the top has to come off. Of course, you have to unplug your electric winder. And when you put it back together, you want to make sure you remember to reinstall that into the motherboard in there so it'll actually work. We always make sure we always check it, test it before we send it back. So the customer doesn't call and go, why doesn't the bob winder work? Oops, I know. So that's something you always want to do. It's got the thread cutter. And it doesn't cut, cut, cut. It just cuts when you tell it to cut. There are machines that every time you stop with the foot control actuated, it'll cut. This one cuts on command, and you don't have to worry about picking up the thread to get started again. It'll just take right off and keep sewing. It has enough of a tail left to do that. So, all considered, it's got a lot of stuff going on for it. Nice little machine. I'd recommend it if you want a heavy, heavy machine. Heavy as in weight. Heavy duty is your call, but I would probably put it in the heavy duty ranks. It's uh, very similar to a full-size industrial in that it has a nice big opening nine full inches instead of seven some little ones have six but this has nine and of course there's longer than that when you get into the long arm stuff like that but nine inches is a lot of area so you got nine by six to work there so a lot going on with this little guy i recommend it and if you can grab one grab it but get you one of those carrying cases with the extending handle and the roll around wheels because it's heavy the junomi 1600p d bx thanks